Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Cindy Chavez here. Today is Tuesday, June the 5th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, your first daily dose of happy for the day. And uh, I wanted to start off today's show by just telling our audience how much we really appreciate that you are our audience. I mean, I can remember back when I first started doing this, I had no audience at all. So first of all, just to have an audience is great. And second of all, just from the people we've talked to, Cindy, you know, we don't get lots and lots of calls, but we've had calls from from some audience members. And we, we've got some great audience members. I mean, our listeners are some of the most wonderful, inspired, intelligent, creative people in the world. And, and so I just wanted to do a shout out to the entire audience. And maybe we should be doing this regularly where, you know, we really we have a great audience. We have a great listership and, and we want to appreciate them. That's my message anyway. And I, I, I love it. I agree. Early. Not just calls either, but emails. Emails too. Yeah, yeah. Like we've all the some fantastic emails, wonderful emails from e- wonderful people, and it's always just so nice to know uh, the the way the podcast is, you know, manifesting in their life, their yeah. experience of it. Um, and I don't know. I there's always occasionally I get emails. Um, not necessarily from the podcast, although I have, but also just, you know, someone hears me somewhere or they read something I've written. And there's always that idea that for, you know, every letter that you get, there's a, a, a big crowd of other people who are thinking it, but not let, writing the letter, maybe, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's and what so, occurred to me. Yeah. So I always feel so appreciative and and it's it's been something that's encouraged me to reach out to people as well when I'm thinking of them or when I'm appreciating them and let them know because so many times with me anyway personally is I w- I can appreciate something and not ever say anything. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's like so I'm, easy to do that. Oh, I'm in my head thinking this is so great but I don't ever let the people know. So when when we get emails or phone calls, it feels really good. It does. It's a, it feels amazing. And I mean, I was thinking about it last night. I, I, I actually was awake in the middle of the night um, trying to figure out some solutions for my wife's gardening business. I mean, this is like the busiest part of the year. And, you know, crazy stuff happens in the busiest part. That's just, you know, normal, right? One of the things I was thinking about is when, when things get stressful, and that's what happens when things get really, really busy, the stress levels go up, you kind of need to counter it. And it's one of those things that you have to counter from the top. So I actually proposed it to my wife this morning. She loved the idea. She jumped on board um, that we need to institute a company-wide policy where every manager who's out there in the field dealing with the gardeners and the other employees and so forth, every time that they see an employee for the first time in the day, they're going to say something really appreciative to that person. Something like, you know, we, we love you. We, we, we value you so much. We trust you. We appreciate all of the work that you do and so forth. And just make that a daily thing every single time that a manager sees an employee for the first time that day. Knowing that when you do that, it has a very strong cumulative effect. And, and just as, as uh, junk flows downhill, so also good feeling flows downhill. If it starts at the top, it's going to go right down to the, to the smallest person in the organization. So I'm thinking, well... Why not do the same kind of thing with our show? Because, my God, we have people who listen to 30 to 45 podcasts a month. I mean, we talk about that fairly often, but I'm still flabbergasted by that. That just shows, first of all, how loyal they are. Second of all, how much they love it. But third, how wonderful they are. They're, they're such great people. They just want to keep listening to us. That That is, oh, I, I, words fail me, which is hard because words don't usually fail me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that you said a minute ago, you know, you started out with no audience. So just to have an audience yeah. is like amazing, yeah. right? And that's so true. And sometimes as we go through life and we um, we start any kind of project as it goes along and becomes something bigger and bigger, um, a lot of times we're so busy with it that we don't stand back and take a look at what it's become or what how much you know it's like you were talking last week about giving yourself credit all of us like right people right. just standing back and it's one of the things that I often uh, and maybe not often enough but try to remember to remind clients to take a step back and appreciate yourself and and realize how much 
you've done, realize how much credit you should be giving yourself for what you've done and how far you've come and the things that you've um, accomplished in your life. I, I almost started to say survived because sometimes that's how we feel. It's like, oh, I'm glad I survived. Well, sometimes it is survival. I mean, especially yeah. if you're in a really, really bad place, you're, you're starting in a place of survival. So that, that does make sense. It does apply in some cases. I, I heard something. This is a, a little bit uh, veering off topic, but it was, I thought, so fantastic. Um, it was an interview that Oprah Winfrey did with Will I Am on her Super Soul Sunday thing. Um, it was actually on Facebook Live, and somebody shared the link. And I think it was pretty recent because I've seen it all over the place. Um, but he, it's a it's a long inter it's a maybe 35 40 minute interview I think. Mm -hmm. But in one point of it he was talking about she asked him about his spiritual practice and he said that when he prays or meditates that he prays to his uh, younger self as well as to his future self. Oh nice. Of course, I got really excited about that because yeah. <laughs> that lines up exactly with the kind of things that I do in my spiritual practice but he said he's in his 40s now and that when he prays or meditates, he reaches back, you know, in his mind and he talks to his 18 year old self who he said was so lost. And because he said and then she said, well, what? Why do you do that? Like, you're already here. So why do you <laughs> go back? Because and he said, this is why I'm here. That's this it. is why I'm here because yeah. I went back and encouraged and prayed for my younger self. And he said, and I'm, I'm moving into new projects because my 60 year old self is reaching back to me <laughs> and helping me and encourage. And I was like, I was kind of screaming at the TV at the time uh, we watched it last night. I had heard about it and I just don't watch a lot of video ever anywhere. And um, I didn't want to watch it on my phone. And so um, my wonderful man uh, said, oh, here, let's just do this. So he just put it on his phone and cast it to the TV. So right before dinner, I said, okay, I'm going to sit down and relax and watch this. And uh, I was kind of shouting at the TV at that point. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of some of what Neville Goddard says about, you know, when you have an experience that turns out not the way you wanted, um, even like a conversation with someone, he will talk about, in a meditation, going back and redoing it the way you wish it would have happened. Mm. And, you know, kind of time travel. We're talking time travel here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? sort of, right. Ma manipulation of how things, of energy and how things work. So I was excited about that. But what made me think of it in our conversation this morning is that I often will, if someone tells me they're going through something hard, or even if they're not, even if they're starting a new project or are excited about something, I will often use the phrasing that I am holding the vision for them of whatever it is, um, of success, of health, of whatever they're shooting for, right? Whatever, whatever it is that they are working on manifesting, mm -hmm. um, to let them know that they're not alone and that, and I do it. I do hold that vision for them. Um, I think I've probably said that to you before when you were working on the book or something, right? Like, you yeah, know, you holding did. the vision for you of a big success. And so I think that that's what we do for our audience is everyone listening. We hold a vision for you of you manifesting your biggest dreams and your highest good. I love that. In fact, I want to do more of that. I, I want to make sure that we're doing that in as many podcasts as we can even think to do it. Maybe we should just make it like a regular thing, you know, just as regular as uh, welcome to LOA Today, your daily dose of happy, just part of that somehow. But I love that. I just love that so much. I mean, who doesn't need that, first of all? Who doesn't need that kind of reinforcement every day? And, and wouldn't it be great if you could actually... Uh, wake up in the morning or tune in in the afternoon or whatever to, you know, whatever podcast you're listening to out of our series and get that nice jolt just as it starts off. That little uh, positive jolt of of feel good and of reinforcement that you're you're doing the right thing. You're going in the right direction. You're, you're making progress. You know, you, you deserve a pat on the back for all you've been learning to do. Wouldn't it be great if yeah, we just I give that it. to everybody? 
you know? <laughs> it reminds me of when I was a kid and there was this television show on called Romper Room. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. And and Miss Marianne would look through her magic mirror and see all the people that were watching and she would call out names. And of course, every kid in the world is waiting for her to call. Right, names. right. <laughs> uh, because it was a blessing of sorts. Yeah. You know? It was, uh, it was, I see you and I know you're there and I appreciate yes. you. I mean, I really think that's what that was. And it feels good to be appreciated. It, does. it feels good to be acknowledged. And we know that we're not just sitting here, you know, I mean, even if we were just sitting here having a conversation just with the two of us, it would still be happy and fun. But we know that's not the case now. We know that we right. have an audience that's listening and we do appreciate our audience. So we do. Yeah. yeah. You're right too. It, there, there is something to be said about wanting to have that recognition, that appreciation, that "I see you" factor. That that's the factor that Louise um, leverages heavily with with little kids that we see out in public. She goes out of her way to make sure that they know she sees them, and gets remarkable reactions for it. Just amazing reactions. The younger the kid, the more remarkable the reaction is. It could be, you know, like almost an infant, and she'll she'll do her ICU routine, and the kid just wakes up, and the eyes get big, and the smile comes on, and they get so excited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a basic human need to be seen and be heard. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons why social media has blown up so much because. One, we live in a pretty crowded world. True. And yeah. we live in a very busy world. Yeah. And the busyness and the, you know, everything going on can somehow sometimes make us feel or we can feel it. Nothing makes us feel anyway. We get to choose how we feel, but right. we can start to feel invisible sometimes because there's so much stuff going on. And social media arrived and it's a way to say, here I am. And then other people like your post or whatever, and you feel like you've been seen and heard. Exactly. I mean, it's meeting a basic human need that we all have. And I think that's why it's so popular. I think you're right. Human recognition. Recognition is big. It's one of the, isn't it one of the, the pillars of the Abraham Maslow pyramid? I think so. Um, I, th I think it's the, one of the higher levels. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting to look at that and see how it compares to sort of like our emotional scales and all of that. They all work together. But yeah, we do. We 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 are wired for connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we are as humans, we are small group primates and we thrive in community. Um, we actually thrive in smaller communities and groups, which is why we get kind of uh birds of a feather, you know, all of those kind of ideas, mm. but we do, we thrive in connection. We're made to connect with other people and it's a, uh, it's a basic human need that we have. And, and that actually underlies another thing that is a commonality with our audience because our listeners, not only are our listeners terrific people, I mean, really, really terrific people, but we do have that one commonality. We're all interested in the law of attraction. That's right. a great commonality to have. I mean, of all the different kinds of clubs, let's call them clubs for the, for just the sake of having an easy term. Of all the kinds of clubs that are out there, how many of them are as positive as this one? <laughs> That's a good point. There really aren't that many. There are some that, that have very, very positive aspects to them. But a lot of them have really negative aspects to them. This is like pure positivity. That makes it even yeah. more special because yeah. <laughs> that means that we're attracting in people who not only are amazing people, but there are also people who are so attracted to having really positive experiences with their podcast listening. Like, wow, that's great. And all on the subject of law of attraction. That, that's a really powerful combination right there. It is. So, audience, we appreciate you very we much. We do. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, it's a good club to belong to, right? <laughs> it is. Welcome to the club. Isn't it great to be a member of this club? This is a fabulous club. And and by the way, feel free to contact us some more. I mean, you know, if, if it's something where you have thought about it and, well, you know, I'll do it another time or so forth, you know, just, you know, go to the website and, and click on the contact page. And just send us a little note. You know, send an email. Um, email address, mine is walt at LOAToday.net. It's a really, really difficult one to remember. <laughs> 
Because it's pretty straightforward. Just, uh, but just contact us. We love it. Uh, find us on our various websites. I mean, most of the co-hosts, um, maybe not quite so much recently, but most of them have, have told you what their websites are. Contact them through their websites. And people do contact them through their websites. Every one of you has talked about how you've been contacted by somebody because they heard you on the show. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's always great. It is. Really it is. Great. It's really good. So let's see, we are continuing our discussion of Money and the Law of Attraction by Jerry and Esther Hicks, which is a book that I read very early on in my journey to understand and explore how the Law of Attraction works. And I hadn't read it in a while. And so when you, when you talked about us you know, going through it uh, you know, section by section on the podcast, I said, yeah, that's good because there's some good stuff in there. And I, I kind of hadn't. I hadn't read it in a while. And sure enough, especially when we got to part two, which was all about specifically the money part, boy, well, there was some really good stuff in there. But currently we're on part three, which is about well-being. And <clears throat> we talked about this last week, but it's not something we normally think about as being associated with money. And yet well-being is really critical because if you don't have well-being, all the money in the world doesn't really help. So the well-being is, is very, very important. And that includes health. It includes personal health. You know, something else that just occurred to me, too, is while you were saying, you know, now we're on the section about well-being that may not seem um, connected. Not only does the well-being allow us to enjoy what wealth that we have, but these things are all connected in the way that earlier last week, possibly the week before, um, there was a section and we repeated the idea about complaining and it talked about it talked about that they weren't just speaking of because it came into the section that we're on now about well-being. And so immediately the examples can be complaining about ill health, like complaining because I'm sick, complaining because I have a headache, whatever. But the point that, that they made in the book was that if you're complaining about something in your body, it's because you were already complaining about other things before <laughs> and that and that dis-ease and pain and ill health often manifest in the body as a result of us complaining about other things and they said even if you're complaining about how much someone else complains and what i <laughs> what hit me when you were saying about you know that this section seems like it could be you know not directly connected i was thinking how many people complain about money true very true. Um, complain about their financial situation. And then as a result of complaining about money, um, and I'm not even talking about people that may not have a lot of money. I mean, even people with money can complain about money situations. Oh, yeah. But if we're in a state where we don't have enough money and we're complaining about it incessantly, and then those complaints begin to manifest in our body as pain or ill health or sickness, then we're really in a bad spot. Mm hmm. Right, yeah, very <laughs> because true. then we then we're kind of giving ourselves the double whammy there. So, I think it's really important that we recognize how interconnected all these ideas are. Like we are holistic beings, so very true. everything affects everything else. Our feelings about money affect our well being and our relationships, and it's all just so wound up and that's why it's so important that we get in alignment and focus on having a better thought and telling a better story because it's going to affect everything and I actually see that sometimes in in coaching people where if there's some situation in their life that's just too emotionally charged sometimes we can come from a different direction and shift something that's not quite so emotionally charged, and then everything else lines up. Very so true. we're just, we can be complicated at times, but <laughs> no it kidding. really is sort of pretty simple. It's just all all the same thing. It all comes back to our thoughts and our feelings. It does indeed. And uh, by the way, before we get into this, I want to remind people, we have a lot of new listeners. And if you are a new listener, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Second of all, we want to encourage you to become a subscriber too, and it's perfectly free. There's, doesn't, there's no charge to it or anything like that. Um, just go to the homepage at LOAToday.net, and you'll see how to do it. It's all laid out there, very simple. 
Uh, but it really pays off because that's how it is that people can listen to 30 to 45 episodes a month, which so many people do. And that's why we were spending so much time earlier in the show today appreciating them and, and telling them how much we, we value them as audience members and as listeners. But we want you to be among that, that club, too. We want you in the club. So just take a moment and go to the homepage at LOAToday.net and fill in, uh, uh, you know, follow the instructions. It's real simple. It'll take you like two minutes maximum to do. And then once you're subscribed, you will get an automatic feed of a continuous stream of all the podcasts as they get published directly to your Android or iPhone or any other device for that matter. But typically it's, it's a phone device and you'll be able to just stay on top of the podcast on a regular basis. Perfect. Then you won't miss anything. That's right. You won't miss we anything. We won't miss you. Yeah. Perfect. Well, we'll miss you if you aren't here. That's true. <laughs> Now, you were talking about the interconnectedness of, of well-being and everything else within our experience and how important that is. One question that does come up is, well, what about you know traditional medicine and so forth? Because where does that fit into the whole thing? And that's where we're starting off today with a subsection that's entitled, well, when inspired to visit a medical doctor, question mark, as in, well, what do I do with that? Yeah. So Abraham says, there are many who would, oh, and by the way, if you're in the if you have gotten a copy of the paperback version, we're on the pa- uh, the middle of page 114. Very but good. that is the subsection. When inspired to visit a medical doctor, Abraham says there are many who would protest our perspective, claiming that we are irresponsible when we do not encourage regular checkups on the quest for things that have gone wrong or are getting ready to go wrong or could potentially go wrong with your physical body. And if we did not understand the power of your thoughts, we might even say that if it makes you feel more secure to go to the doctor, then by all means, go. In fact, sometimes when you go looking for trouble and do not find it, you do feel better. But more often than not, the repeated looking for something wrong over time creates it. It is really that simple. We are not saying that medicine is bad or that there is no value to be received by a visit to your doctor. Medicine, doctors, and all healing professions in general are neither good nor bad at their own face value, but instead, they are as valuable as your vibrational stance can allow them to be. That's a different perspective. That's not one we usually hear, but it's a good one. Medicine, doctors, and all healing professionals in general, in general, are neither good nor bad at their own face value, but instead they are as valuable as your vibrational stance can allow them to be. So, in other you know, words, it reminds me of what you hear people say about money, and we're in a money book, right? It's like money isn't yeah. good or bad; it's just neutral. It's just neutral. Yeah. Not, and, and is it good to have information? Sure, it's good to have information. The question is, what kinds of information are you going to get? I, I mean, there are fortunately there are healing practitioners who are primarily oriented toward health. And they, yes. they're small in number compared to the larger majority, but nevertheless, they exist and they are growing in number. And that section of the health community are doing a tremendous service, as far as I'm concerned. Now, they themselves and what they're doing are neither good nor bad. It depends on how you receive it, of course. But potentially, what you can get from that is fantastic. Because you're giving yourself the opportunity to to basically get a health fix <laughs> rather than a sickness fix. Yeah. Well, I love the, you know, the way they point out that if we go looking for trouble. Yeah. Right. So this part's in italics. Our encouragement is that you pay attention to your emotional balance, work deliberately to find the best feeling thoughts you can find. And practice them until they are habitual. And in doing so, you will tend to your vibrational alignment first and then follow through with whatever action you feel inspired to. In other words, a trip to your doctor or action toward anything when accompanied by joy or love or good feeling emotion is always valuable. While action that is motivated by your fear or vulnerability or any bad feeling emotion is never valuable. Your physical well-being, like everything else, is profoundly affected by the beliefs that you hold. Usually when you are younger, your expectation of wellness is stronger. 
that as you get older, most of you degenerate on a sort of sliding scale that reflects what you are seeing in others around you. And your observation is not inaccurate. Older people do experience more illness and less vitality. But the reason for the decline of people as they get older is not because their physical bodies are programmed to break down over time, but because the longer they live, the more they find to fuss and worry about, causing resistance to their natural stream of well-being. Illness is about resistance, not about age. That, that's really very um, poignant for me right now and has been for a while because as uh, regular listeners know, I have periodically talked about the fact that I've been dealing with knee problems for the last three months now. Um, I'm pretty sure I ended up pulling a ligament, and ligament injuries can take a while to heal, according to what the track records show us. But also during this period of time while I've been trying to heal it and trying to exercise where appropriate and doing the exercise in ways that, that doesn't you know re-injure it in a major way and so on and so forth, I've also become more and more aware of how important the injury itself is as an indicator of where my thought process was and where it continues to be at times. Cause I'm like anybody else. I mean, I, I, it's not like on the podcast, you and I, and the others, we, we try to put on as much of a positive face as we can most of the time because we want to have that positive face, but we're human beings, right? <laughs> it's, when we go through daily right. life, you know, we, we have our moments. I had one yesterday. Oh boy, did I have one yesterday. It was a real challenge to my, my new uh, thing. I, I don't know if I told you, but for June, I've set myself a goal, a 30 day challenge, so to speak. During these 30 days of June, I am, whenever a negative thought process starts to come out or starts to occur to me, and I, and I, my first goal is to notice it. And then once I notice it, to stop it by saying, stop right there. I need a better feeling thought and just kind of, you know, shift <laughs> myself off of it, you know? And I love I, it. I, I, well, I love it too. Except it also has pointed out to me through trying it for the first few days that, <laughs> boy, do I have a lot of times when that happens. <laughs> I mean, yesterday, there, I, I think it probably happened a couple do dozen times yesterday that I had to stop myself and just say, you know, I don't want to go there. Give me a better feeling thought. Universe, send one now. This one's a really bad one. <laughs> I love it. But, but here's the thing. It's always like that. Any process that we, any awareness practice that we begin always starts like that. Yeah, it does. It's like, oh my goodness. And then pretty soon, you know, we'll recognize the progress. It's exactly. like the, the, when people put the rubber band on their wrist and snap their wrist every time to break a habit. Well, I can't say I like doing that, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't like doing that either. Um, but I mean, I think that's the point is I've heard people say, oh, my goodness, how many times I snapped that rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had this picture of you walking around <laughs> going, stop, <laughs> stop right there. It's the old, <laughs> it's speaking thought. of doctors, I mean, because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about going to the doctor. Speaking of doctors, there's the old doctor joke where the patient goes to the doctor and says, doctor, doctor, it hurts whenever I raise my arm like that. Yeah, and the doctor says, well, don't like raise that. your arm like that. It's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but we do it. It's crazy. I mean, the fact that I got the knee injury, we talked about earlier last week, how any kind of medical condition is an indication of where our thought process has been. So what it means is not only was my thought process at times not so good leading up to getting the injury, but because the injury hasn't cured itself yet, that thought process is still hanging around. This is like a big warning sign to me. Like, Walt, well, pay I attention. I give you another perspective. <laughs> my other perspective, uh, not to negate this one, but just alongside it, is that every symptom is a healing gesture. Oh. And... The idea of what if this is exactly the way it's supposed to be? In other words, we often get an idea that when there's pain, um, that something's wrong. And I think, like you just said, a big warning sign. I mean, that's exactly right. It's our body saying, hey, <laughs> right? Something's going on over here. Red flag, but red the, flag. Yeah, but the fact that we're having a symptom we want to categorize it as something is wrong, right? Something's wrong. My knee hurts. Something's wrong. I feel sick. Something's wrong. Um, and yet it's actually something right. Like our body is giving us a signal and to, to pay attention and to maybe do something differently, yes. but it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's supposed to work that way. And the fact that we are all human beings 
living here on this planet. And we are actually not only just wired for pleasure, we're also wired for pain. That's why when we touch a hot stove, it hurts. Um, it's there for a reason. So we don't want to live continually in pain. Of course not. Um, but I still like to always remind myself that it's okay, that there's something right going on, that every symptom is a healing gesture, and that it's just getting my attention. And now that it has my attention, we can do what, what you've been doing. Okay, where's the better feeling thought? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. In fact, uh, that's also a good thing to keep in mind when we're feeling the pain, during the, the feeling of the pain, like with yeah. this new thing, it's not constant pain. There, there are times where the pain, the pain is continuous, but it's not all the time that it happens. Like if I'm lying down and in the right position, I don't feel any pain. Um, there is, you know, I, I, I'm working my leg. I, I have been building up the muscles around my knee and so forth to, to strengthen it. Cause I, I read online, that's an important thing to have the kind of, you know, strong structure in place so that ligaments can heal quicker. And uh, also looking at dietary things, making sure I get enough vitamin A, vitamin C, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the point is that when I, I focus on that, there are times when my knee doesn't hurt. And sometimes it's when I'm, I'm manipulating it, moving it, because I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it going. I, I, I want, you know, I follow the thing, use it or lose it. I want to make sure I keep it. So I keep using it in ways that doesn't injure it. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. doing bike riding, for instance, because bike riding is extremely low impact and, and has very little um, wear and tear on, on, on the legs at all. Um, and, and it makes it much easier to moderate yourself. So, you, you know, you're just not pushing it too hard. And it works. Well, so I'm building up the, the, the knee physically. And at the same time, when I find myself in that physical pain place, which is not consistent, it's just, you know, periodic, I can remind myself about the times when it doesn't hurt. And in that way, focus on when is my knee in proper alignment? When am I, when am I using it properly? When, when, is, when am I getting the, the, the benefit that shows me that, yes, I am healing? Because that's the hard thing about pain. You don't really, when you're feeling the pain, it, that you can't really see the way out. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So you I need love a way that you out. said I remind myself about the times it's not hurting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if, for, somebody who, for somebody who's dealing with a chronic pain, that's even more of a challenge because they right. aren't getting the respite, right? Right. Um, but the same principle still applies. That's why I said this is what I focus on when I'm feeling the pain. I remind myself it is possible to not feel pain. It is possible for myself to be in a healthier place. And, and since my pain isn't chronic, it's a lot easier for me to imagine it. But really, anybody can do that. Anybody can remind themselves, yes, it is possible to not feel pain. It is possible to feel good and to try well, to remember what feel good another me. I'm going to throw another twist at you. <laughs> okay. Um, pain is just sensation. And so we can, we can also give ourselves an exercise to see if we can actually enjoy it. Ooh, a little, little because, masochistic there, isn't it? <laughs> well, it may sound that way. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. We read it. It's in italics and it's underlined. It's the last sentence that we read. Illness is about resistance, not about age. And so when we are hurting and we don't want to hurt, what are we doing? Oh, I don't want to feel this pain. Don't want to feel this pain. Stop. I want the pain to stop. We are resisting, resisting, resisting. What mm -hmm. if we just welcomed it for a moment and said, um, it's just sensation. I wonder if it could actually not just be tolerated, but what if I actually enjoyed feeling this for a second? Um, yeah, it's an advanced practice for sure. <laughs> but I thought I'd throw it out there. Is it, well, what you're suggesting is that pain can be morphed into no pain. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Um, and there's a lot of exercises that you can do with that. We talked about last week, I think, um, assigning an, an SUD is what it would be called in the medical field. It's a subjective unit of discomfort, um, which, which it could be a, a number on a scale. So this headache, what you know, in my house is we'll just ask each other one to 10 because we know what we're talking about. So, yeah. oh, this headache, wh where is it? It's a seven, you know, um, and then allow yourself to relax into it and recognize it's just sensation and ask yourself this question in this specific way. What if I liked the way this felt? Um, 
because it's a it's a right brain open ended kind of question that triggers curiosity, and all we're trying to really do is to lessen the resistance enough to bring that number down <laughs> where the pain isn't so bad. So what do you do with the answer though? I mean, you asked yourself the question: um, what if what if uh, I just float into what what if I I, how'd you say it? What, what if I liked it? No. How'd you phrase it? Well, I just said, what if I actually liked the way this felt? What if I liked the way this felt? So, so where do you take there is that? A, we don't have to search for an answer. Um, it's just a, it's a question that's just open-ended for the sake of curiosity. Huh? Right. It's like that, the Yoda sound. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's that curiosity that takes away. We can't, the part of our brain that gets curious. Um, and prompted by that sound, hmm, um, what if I like this? Um, the, the, the part of our brain that gets curious will not operate at the same time as the part that's judgmental. And when we're judging it as wrong and bad and horrible, this pain, um, then we're, we're making a judgment and we're putting ourselves into the state of resistance. So all I'm suggesting is just to ask the question by way of curiosity we're not trying to like it. We're not trying to like something we don't like. We've talked about that before, the whole fake it till you make it. Right. We have to know what that means. And we're not saying we want you to pretend that you really like being poor. <laughs> we want you to pretend that you love that migraine. <laughs> That's not really what I'm asking you to do, but just to say, hmm, it's just sensation. Um, and, it, you know, it may only help for a second, but it's just a practice. So I thought I'd throw it out there. Uh, it's a practice just to deal with resistance. But, of course, the main thing that any human mind is going to do is it's going to want to try to follow it up somehow. You, you've posed the question. So the, the, mm -hmm. the, the human tendency is we, we want to find an answer somewhere in there. Where do you, how do you go with that? Um, I allow my brain to do that work. In other so, words, it's not a test that I have to write an answer out on. So, so you just so. put it on autopilot and then let it go. Yeah. Okay. And this is going to be way off topic, but right. <laughs> sort of. But I, I, I just remembered it and wanted to bring it up where it says illness is about resistance, not about age. And we yeah. were talking about, and I was actually listening to the podcast. And I believe you were wishing an uncle happy birthday. Yes. And I got the wrong year for him. <laughs> I just realized that the day afterward. So let me correct that one. My uncle did not turn 101. He turned 102. I, oh I, I shorted him a year. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and so I heard you were talking about that you also had a relative that was like 108 or something. Yeah, I my, was like, wow. My great grandmother lived to 108. Yeah. On my mother's side. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. And see, I've heard story after story of people saying that they have a relative that lived to be, you know, like 98. And it was only the last six months that they weren't like driving themselves around and taking care of themselves. And that's so amazing. But it, I, I thought of it when I read this line this morning mm -hmm. that about age that, that we that we often think it's that as you get old, your body breaks down. Abraham is saying, no, <laughs> the reason for the decline of people as they get older is not because their physical bodies are programmed to break down over time, but because the longer they live, the more they find to fuss and worry about uh, causing resistance to their natural stream of well-being. So and I happy believe birthday that. to your uncle, who well, obviously <laughs> is doing well with non-resistance. He is. He's doing very well. <laughs> and I, I, I aspire to that. I mean, I think I mentioned that in that program as well. I aspire to removing the resistance to the point where I reverse the apparent so-called age-related condition. Yeah. That is really just yeah, a resistance-related yeah. condition. Yeah, and, well, and I thought it was so funny because if I recall correctly, um, Wendy had said, okay, don't be shocked, but I'm shooting for a year even higher than 101. And you said, how how old are you? wanting to to get to and she said 108 and you and that's when you said right. oh yeah i have this relative that was 108 and i was like Good grief. that's awesome <laughs> it's <is> awesome <laughs> i don't have a year i'm just gonna go indefinitely so i mean i, I figure I, you know miracles I, I, happen every day i pick a year just because I, I like to pick a year not because i really uh am attached to that year in any way but the i think i mentioned in that show my year is 150 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's awesome. And my goal, actually, you know what my plan is? My plan is to be successful living to like 130 or 140 and then adjust the goal upward. Okay, well, it used to be 150. I'm going for 250 now. <laughs> <laughs> Methuselah. Was that the guy in the Bible that lived to be like yeah, that? Yeah. Well, uh, well, actually, not just, there are a lot of people in the Bible. A lot of biblical figures have yeah, long, Yeah, well, that's lives, true. That's true. You know? <laughs> and then, I guess, resistance just kicked into the human race, and we I all guess started. I it did, yeah. Sure. But, but resistance, that key, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. Illness is about resistance, not about age. I, that's something I continue to try to focus on and get my head around. And I say get my head around because it's not easy for us. We are so conditioned by the idea that as you get older, you fall apart. And that's just a natural condition. That's what we're so conditioned to believe. And I find myself still believing it at many, many times, many, many junctions in life. But I'm, I am consciously working on changing my mindset so that I believe that illness is about resistance, that aging conditions are about resistance and not about age. And that if I can, when I can, change my own mindset and remove those resistances, I will not only expen extend my lifespan, I will extend the amount of time that I get to spend here in this wonderful life living gloriously. Because that's really what it's all about. That, there's really no point in living to 150 if you're in a wheelchair all that time or if you're bedridden or you're suffering throughout that. that, that that's pointless. But yeah, if you can be the, out and doing stuff. Word. Yeah. If you're suffering, if you're not enjoying it. I mean, that's right. Yeah. So. I mean, if I were suffering and I didn't see any end of the suffering, I wouldn't want to live to 150. I'd want it to be over now. <laughs> So this next section I'm so curious about because the subtitle is, <laughs> and it, it's posed as a question also. So euphoria in the jaws of a lion. Yeah. That, now that's a really weird subsection, <laughs> but okay. It, it okay, sounds Jerry, very simple. Actually, it part. sounds like you. It sounds like what you just said about you know, <laughs> feeling good about the pain. <laughs> right. It's a curious question. It is. So let's right, see. So Jerry, so Jerry says, I heard that a famous man, Dr. Livingston, while in Africa, it was dragged off by a lion that grabbed him with its jaws. He said that he went into a sort of euphoric state and felt no pain. That was an interesting twist on what you were talking about. I've seen prey go limp like that when they're about to be eaten by a larger animal. It's kind of like there is a giving up and the struggle is over. But my question is about his statement about feeling no pain. Was what he was calling euphoria a mental condition or a physical condition? And is it something that only happens in extreme conditions like when you're about to be eaten or killed? Or could it be utilized by anyone when there is something that's painful in order not to feel the pain? Oh, Abraham says, first, we will say that you cannot accurately separate that which is physical from that which is mental from that which is coming from your higher or inner being. Can we in underline words, that five, five or six times? Right. That, that, is, that is so critical. First, we will say that you cannot accurately separate that which is physical from that which is mental from that which is coming from your higher or inner being. In other words, you are a physically focused being. Yes. And you are a thinking mental being. Yes. But the life force or energy that comes forth from within you is offered from a broader perspective. In such a situation where it is likely that you would not recover, in other words, once a lion has you in his jaws, usually he is going to be the victor. Your inner being intervenes and offers a flow of energy that would be received by you as that sort of euphoric state. You do not have to wait until you're in such an intense situation before you have access to the stream of well-being from source, but most people do not allow it until they have no other choice. You were right in your choice of words that there was a giving up that allowed that stream of well-being to flow powerfully. But we want you to understand that, <clears throat> excuse me, that what was actually given up was the struggle, the resistance, not the desire to continue to live in this physical body. You have to take all of that into consideration as you're examining specific situations. Someone with less enthusiasm for life, with less determination to live and continue to accomplish, may very well have experienced a different outcome 
and have been killed and devoured by the lion. Everything that you experience is about the balance of thought between your desires and your expectations. A state of allowing is something that must be practiced in normal day-to-day circumstances, not in the midst of attacks by lions. <laughs> yeah. But even in the middle of such an intense situation, the power of your intentions always causes the outcome. Practiced alignment. I like that term, by the way, practiced alignment. Yeah. Brought about by consistently good feeling thoughts is the path to being pain free. Pain is only a more emphatic indicator of resistance. First, there is negative emotion and then more negative emotion, then more negative emotion. You have tremendous leeway here. (laughs) Then sensation and then pain. We tell our physical friends, if you have negative emotion and you do not realize that it is an indicator letting you know about resistant thought and you do not do something to correct your resistant thought, by the law of attraction, your resistant thought will grow stronger. If you still do not do anything to bring yourself into alignment and better feeling thoughts, it will grow stronger still until eventually you will experience pain and illness or other indicators of your resistance. So there is so much in here that I want to go back to. Mm. Um, you know, this they they listed this this kind of chain of events here: negative emotion, and then more negative emotion, and then more negative emotion, <laughs> and then sensation. Yes, and then pain. And what I was saying earlier about pain is just sensation um, shows a kind of backing up from right. It's like a reverse <laughs> action. And that's what I was talking about was just get dropping that number a little bit. Mm. But yeah. here where they talk about, you know, if you have negative emotion and you don't realize that it's an indicator letting you know that you're out of alignment, that it will grow until it becomes physical, Very important. a physical, a physical pain, not yeah. just a mental thought. And so that's the thing is that often we don't pay attention to it. Or we get caught in a negative spiral. And yes, it happens to all of us. Um, Maybe not so much some of us who have been very practiced in alignment, which I love that that term, practice alignment. But it still happens. Um, It still happens. Things happen that we don't wish for or don't expect. And, you know, we can get into a a negative mindset about it, uh, a downward spiral, so to speak and feel all kinds of feelings that we don't want to feel and thoughts we don't want to have. And that's why it's so important to be practiced that we catch it and say, okay, um, you know, last night I had a chain of events that just one thing after another, <laughs> I'm making air quotes. Cause like one thing after another <laughs> and in the kitchen just was not going right. And it, and at some point I took a glass out of the cupboard and another glass got knocked out and it just shattered everywhere. And I, oh. I just said, <laughs> I just, it was sort of like at the end of all these things, I said, I'm just going to go to bed now. (laughs) (laughs) Not a bad plan, I must say. (laughs) It was the giving up, I guess. It was. It was. It's just, okay, I'm done. (laughs) I'm not going to do another thing. (laughs) I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. And none of that felt good, you know, but it's just recognizing that a part of it is, about expectations, I think sometimes mm-hmm. it is. You know, in this whole idea of conscious creation and deciding we want to that we are able to actually deliberately create what we want. Sometimes the expectations are really, really high, and there shouldn't be any judgment when you know when we break a glass, right? Because we live here <laughs> where these things happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't know anyone who has gotten to the level where they never have a slip up. They never feel anything uncomfortable. They never experience any hardship at all. They never have physical pain. I I don't know anybody that lives there. I know people that come pretty close, um, but, you know, it's a process and it's a practice and it takes time. (laughs) Joel pointed out something to me last week, I believe it was, that there are people who have a physical condition that prevents them from feeling pain and they actually have very short lives 
because they don't know when they're injured. Right. They aren't getting right. the signal. You know, so yeah. they don't know what, that they have to do something about it. It's funny. I have a very high pain threshold. And it's not that. I don't have a condition where I don't feel pain. But over the course of my life, and it started when I was fairly young, I, I had the recognition that because I was, I guess, just the recognition at first when I was younger that we don't all feel pain the same way. Mm -hmm. Because I would notice something that maybe I could imagine because I'd experienced it before, how much it would hurt me. And I'd see someone else's response to the right. same kind of thing. And I'd be like, gee, that doesn't hurt that bad. <laughs> it's like, that, why are they freaking out? You know? Um, and I've often wondered, like, if that's not a real good thing, like sometimes I'd be like, oh, I have a, I'm glad I have a high pain threshold or I think this would have been a lot worse. But sometimes I ask myself, well, maybe it's not the best thing. <laughs> you know, the pain is, serves a purpose. It's there for a reason. So, well, Joel yeah. tells a really good story about that. I think he told this story last week, too, about how he once went in for a gallbladder operation to have his gallbladder removed. And he went in that morning. They prepped him. By noon, 1 o'clock, they were performing the operation. And by 5 o'clock, he was in the recovery room. And the doctor's in there talking to him. And Joel starts to get up out of bed. And the doctor says, where are you going? He says, I'm going home. And the doctor <laughs> says, no, 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 you, you have to stay here. You, you, you have some recovery time to do. And basically, to make a long story short, he talked the doctor into letting him leave by asking him, well, what, what do I have to do in order to leave? And the doctor says, well, okay, you have to be able to do a complete loop walking by yourself all the way around the hospital. So Joel immediately got up, started walking all the way around the hospital. He basically frustrated the doctor so much that the doctor says, oh, just go home. Go home. <laughs> now, at the same moment, there was another guy in the same room who had also had a gallbladder operation that same day. That guy stayed. And Joel went home and later discovered he had left, I think it was his charging cable for his phone at the hospital. So he went back the next day to get his charging cable, went to that room and saw the guy there. And the guy said, how are you doing this? And Joel said, doing what? He says, why, are, why aren't you in bed like I am? And Joel said, because I don't let the pain get to me. Uh, to me, just the pain is just a signal that I'm healing, kind of like what you were saying. The, the 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 pain is not something to debilitate me. I'm I'm better. I'm walking around. I feel good. In fact, right now I don't even notice the pain. And the wow. guy was just blown away by that. Two people, yeah. same day, same operation. One person got up and walked away. The other person is still writhing in agony. Well, it's interesting that you know, and I know we're all made different. So, like I said, you know, someone else may have a very low pain tolerance and they're really feeling it. And it really is debilitating. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Them. Well, clearly um, so it was. No he was judgment still there. About, you know, <laughs> but the idea that <clears throat> what you just what you just relayed was that Joel already had um, a, a mindset. Exactly. He already had a certain. Well, I'll just say story. We use that word a lot, but his story was oh well this this isn't this is okay it's just a sign that my body's healing i'm you know um so he had a different story exactly and you know the other man may have had the story that well i'm going to have x operation and that means i'm going to be in the hospital for x amount of days mm -hmm. and he may never have considered a different story you know sometimes we don't that's we right. whenever we whenever we say well that's just the way it is to me, when I say it, or when I hear someone else say it, it's always like a red flag to me <laughs> that there's a belief there, a strong belief there. Now, whether it's a limiting belief, any belief can be limiting, right? But it's like, oh, that's telling me something about my belief when I say, well, that's just the way it is. And so for this guy, that may have been, well, that's just the way it is. You have your gallbladder out. You stay in the hospital three days because there's a lot of pain. So that's how it is. <laughs> Joel had a different story. <laughs> Completely sure. different. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, our stories create our experience. And by the way, there's something else, too, about this section that we just read that is really easy to skim over. And they certainly didn't pay any attention to it. But Dr. Livingstone survived being dragged off by the lion. Well, I mean, they did because they, I, and I, I was going to go back to that as well. So I'm glad you hit on that um, because they said that if a person um, was less, someone with less enthusiasm for life, 
and with less determination to live and continue to accomplish may very well have experienced a different outcome and have been killed and devoured by the lion. Um, and so everything that we experience is about the balance of thought between desires and expectations. Um, so I think they were pointing that out to me. That just sounds like what we just said, mm. <laughs> Dr. Livingstone, he had a different story. He did. Um, he had a life force that wasn't ready to go. You know, it makes me think of when Jerry said to Abraham, well, you often see this when animals are attacked, when prey would just go limp. Mm -hmm. And it seems that they're just giving up. Right. It, it made me wonder what stories they had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you can kind of imagine what they must have been. Otherwise, well, they I wouldn't mean, have gone well, limp that easily. We're, we're talking about animals, but, you know, animals have personalities. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you anybody that's ever had more than one at the time knows that they're very different, just like, you know, people, children, animals, they have very different personalities and different ways they respond to different things. So why couldn't you have an animal that was more pessimistic? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, just come over to our house and visit. Meet our two cats. Two, they're both <laughs> black. They, they look identical and two entirely different personalities. I mean, not even close. They're so different. <laughs> they so just... I think that's a really interesting thing to, to think about. But yeah, it's this is where this is why the practice alignment is so important. Yes. Because like they said, it, it's generally not when we're in the mouth of a lion that we need to suddenly be able to tap into or we decide that we're going to, uh, you know, have less resistance to pain. It's just that in the normal course of our life, we practice. Well, it reminds me of the conversation I had with Louise this morning because I told you how last night I was thinking about these different things to do to help release the stress associated with the business, both for herself and for her staff. And one of the things I said to her was, do me a favor, keep me apprised of stuff that's going wrong, uh, that, that, that needs help so that I can help you fix it sooner instead of bringing it to me when you're about to break. Mm. <laughs> let, let me have a little advance warning on it because then I can help you get out of it sooner. Because I know how right. to fix these things. I'm really good at managing a business. So please, and you know that, and she knows, she does know that. I'm really good at it. So, so bring this stuff to me. I'll show you where the solutions are. And then you can not have the, the high stress situation. Well, and that's the isn't same that thing. Yeah, that's a great example. It's exactly what our bodies are doing with us all the time. That's right. That's right. That's, well, that, that's what was happening with the, the example of the lion. You don't have to wait until you're in the jaws of the lion to start looking at you know what what's going on in your life that needs a little addressing. If we can catch those thoughts and ideas when they're just barely formed, yes. <laughs> they're much easier to take care of. <laughs> that, that's where mindfulness comes into it. That's where paying attention. That's where 30-day challenges to notice those negative thoughts and reverse them as soon as possible come from, the desire yes. to do exactly that. Yes. Wonderful. Which is a great thing. It is. So, okay, well, we got like a minute and a half left, not even that, because we have to play the music too. So, oh, well, I know one <laughs> thing I haven't done with you lately. Tell people how to reach you. I mean, we talked earlier about how we want people to reach out to us. How do they reach you? I am so easy to reach out to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Well, so, that makes it easy. <laughs> you can find me at cindychavez.com, C-I-N-D-I-E-C-H-A-V-E-Z.com. You can email me at cindy at cindychavez.com. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter with the same name, C-I-N-D-I-E-C-H-A-V-E-Z, Cindy Chavez. I'm all over social media, so I would love it for you to reach out and say hello. And you probably even comment on the next show that you're on and say, hey, I got this great message from somebody, one of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate them, and I would love to hear a, a shout out. It's always fun. Well, we do. We all appreciate you. And we're going to make it a point to uh, do that on a regular basis to appreciate you. And, and Cindy, I appreciate you. Thank you for doing the show. And I look forward to doing it again tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. I will as well. We hope you join us as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.